Raise your hand. All right. Half the church was here. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Amen. So I just want to encourage you all to come on out to Wednesday night Bible study. It's from 7 to 8 o'clock. We're going through the book of Daniel. We'll probably uh, conclude the book of Daniel. We have three more chapters to go. Um, and it's been a really, really insightful study and a blessing. Amen. Also, Thursday prayer meeting is every Thursday morning at 730. Those are always awesome prayer meetings. There's five of us that come out. But uh, we, we pray that that number would grow. Amen. Praise God. So I just want to encourage you all to come on out to that. Fourth watch prayer is every Saturday. Saturday uh, morning from 3 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the morning. And um, we have an upcoming revival January 18th through the 20th. We're going to have four services in that revival. Brother Joe Tambora, he's an evangelist. He's coming from Connecticut, and he's going to be uh, conducting that revival. He's come the last two years. It's been a real blessing. And um, January 18th is on a Friday. That service is at 7 o'clock at night. To, to begin the revival. Then the following day, Saturday night at 7, there's another service. And then two services on Sunday, 11 in the morning and 7 o'clock at night. So January 18th through 20th, all this information is in your newsletters. So be, be sure to grab a newsletter, amen, and start spreading the word. Food Pantry is every first and third Sunday of the month at 10 o'clock in the morning. So spread the word on that too. So we can go ahead and, and uh, share the word with people that come in and pick up groceries. Amen. Children's Church at this time is dismissed. And uh, everybody, if you can open up your Bibles and stand to your feet in reverence to the Lord, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When you're there, say amen. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, open up your iPhones to the book. <laughs> There's so many mobile devices with, with uh, Bibles on them. Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, in the Word of God. I'm reading the New, New Living Translation today. And um, <clears throat> the Bible says, What this means is that those who become Christians become new persons. They are not the same anymore. For the old life is gone. A new life has begun. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, we thank you for a new life in you. I pray for those watching by television or anyone under the sound of my voice that does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray that they would accept you, Jesus, to receive you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord God, life is so dead without you, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we would know, us who do believe in you, who have accepted you, would know that our lives are brand new. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. And Lord, let us know through this message today, what does that mean? I pray that we'd, we'd look at your word concerning who we are in Christ. Lord God, our identity, our security, Lord God, in every other area of our lives, Lord God, our significance. I pray that you would show us through this message, Father. We just thank you for part two of this message today, and we pray that you'd bless it. And Holy Spirit, I, speak, I pray that you'd speak through me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Last week, I, I felt led of the Lord to start a, a two-part message on, Do You Know Who You Are is the title. Do you know who you are? Amen. How many know our identity is extremely important to know who we are in Christ? Amen. Amen. And I, I, if we really, really think and pray about this, this is really, really important. Let me ask you a question. If somebody was to say to you, whose opinion of you is the most important, how would you answer that question? Somebody said the right word, Jesus, amen? How many know his opinion of us, God's opinion, is the very most important that we need to receive? How do we get that? Through his word. Some people have been told a lot of bad things in the past. They might have been abused and so forth, but how many know that we have to know who we are in Christ Jesus? You see, a lot of, a, a lot of, a lot of people will be, will be set free in the name of Jesus if they just know who they are, Amen. They will be set free from things, from bondages and certain situations that they're struggling with in their life. The Bible says that we are what? We, we are, we, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How many know we've got to read the Word of God? I was just talking to somebody yesterday, and I says, how's your spiritual condition? And he said, it's pretty lukewarm. I said, why? What's going on? And in talking to this gentleman, I found out in his background, he's not reading the Word anymore. How many know it's extremely important we get our noses in this book every single day? And we're not going to get to a point in, us, in our lives in the Lord that, okay, I'm all set. I don't have to read the Bible anymore. I'm okay. No. The only time we don't have to read the Word of God anymore is when we go home to be with Jesus because we'll be with the living Word. Amen. Do you know there are no Bibles in heaven? 
So they're shocked. No Bibles, because we're with Jesus. Amen. The living word. Somebody say glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it puts it this way in the New King James Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody say, I am a new creation. Oh, amen. Old things have passed away. All your old sin has passed away. It's dead. It's buried. It's on the cross. Amen. Behold, all things have become new. I remember when I first accepted Jesus, amen, the next day I, I was careful how I walked. I didn't even want to step on an ant. That's God's creation. Everything was brand new. I felt peace. I did run into opposition, however. That night, I remember, I went home and I told mom and dad, I said, guess what? I just accepted Jesus. They looked at me and they said, you did what? <laughs> I said, I accepted Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. Isn't that exciting? And they didn't really share in the excitement. Because they had no idea what I was talking about. Amen. Amen. But how many know that we have to make a decision when we receive Jesus, no matter who opposes or who's against it, we still have to continue to walk with the Lord no matter what. Because I'll tell you what, church, and I was just thinking about this this morning as Sister Wendy was doing the opening scripture reading and prayer. You know something? You know what this is all about? Let me put it in a nutshell. It's about convincing people and sharing an awesome message that we know somebody that can live inside of you and can get you to another planet called heaven and we'll all rejoice together in that place. Isn't that what it's about? Amen? Picture, picture heaven as a planet, another planet, and picture hell as a terrible place, amen? How many know, praise God, we can all meet together in heaven one day and there will be no more death There'll be no more hospital beds. There's going to be no more funerals, no more cancer, no more heart disease, no more mess, no more colds, head colds, no more nothing, no more losses. Isn't it worth persevering in Christ? If somebody in your life close to you passes away, but they know Jesus, they simply just got transported to another planet, and soon you're going to see them forever. And you can take that to the bank, amen? Somebody say glory be to God, because it's in the word of Almighty God, amen? That's something to shout about. That's something to be excited about, amen? Praise be to God, hallelujah. Every human being has a great need to be loved, accepted, to feel significant, and to be secure in life. The only way we can truly have, the fe have and feel these things is to be what God has created us to be. First and foremost, to have a personal relationship with him. God is, does not want a religion. He doesn't want a religious person. He wants a relationship with him. A religion says, I'll go through the motions and keep these sacraments and do all this stuff in order to maybe be saved at the end. God says, you are saved. You've received me as your Lord and Savior. You're going to heaven, and it's a journey in a relationship because we're justified by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Isn't that exciting? Amen? I'm glad I don't have to work for my salvation. I'd surely mess it up. I think all of us would. Oh, I got to do this, got to do that to be saved. Oh, I forgot to do that. Whoops, I guess I'm, oh, I'm going down. I'm like, this elevator's going down. I'm not going up. Amen? Thank God it's not up. You see, when he said, when Jesus went in, and he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. The plan of salvation is done. That's God's responsibility. The salvation that he did was put on the cross all of our past, present, and, and future sins. Amen? When we receive the gift of Christ, receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, how many you know, praise God, old things are passed away, they're dead. All things become new. It's all about what he did on Calvary's cross, church. We can't add to it. We can't subtract from it. We, it's all what he already did, and we just have to say, yes, Jesus, I receive it. Amen. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Somebody say, I receive it. Yeah. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know how anyone in this world can live without Jesus. Oh, my gosh. You know those bumper stickers? You know those bumper stickers that say, got milk, question mark? What about God, Jesus, question mark? 
Amen? How many know, praise God, we've got to say, okay, Lord, I am going to keep on walking with you. I'm not going to backslide away from you. I'm going to keep on moving forward in the name of Jesus through thick, through thin, through losses, through situations I don't even understand. I'm going to tr keep on trusting in you, and I'm going to keep on relying on you, and one day I'll go home to be with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And on this journey that we have as Christians, how many know it's great to share the word with other people? To get them in that other planet called heaven one day. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Even many people who have a personal relationship with God, still Christians, struggle sometimes with a lack of peace. Sometimes they feel insecure. Sometimes feeling insignificant and not accepted and unloved. Why is this? Because they don't know who truly they are in Christ Jesus. Amen? If the, I mentioned last week that the President of the United States, children, if they walked in here, how many know there'd be security, uh, security teams all over the place? Because they're very, very important. But how many know, church, you and I are even more important than them? Because we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. If you didn't see, if, if you weren't here la, uh, last week, I'd highly encourage you to go to youtube.com, type in Changing Lives Christian Church, and the first video that's going to come up is last week, because I don't, I'm going to co quickly review what I've talked about last week, amen, I get into more depth with that, but I want to finish this message today. Proverbs tw chapter 23, verse 7 says these words, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen. So, if you think that you are a loser, what are you going to act like? A loser. If you think that you are a child of Almighty God, that you can do all things through Christ, that God thinks about you all the time, that you're a winner, you're not a loser, and you have a Heavenly Father who is crazy about you, then you're going to act just like that. As a man thinks in his heart, another translation says, so he becomes. How we think of ourselves is who our identity is, how we relate to people, how we become because of what our thought processes are as far as who we truly are. So the person who was abused in the past and was called stupid and you're ugly and you're fat and you're this and you're that, you've got to take that stuff and, and reject it and say, no, I am a child of Almighty God. I'm rejecting all that mess. That's not who I am in Christ. Amen? Amen? I'm taking who God says according to the Bible, his word, of who I truly am. Amen? Praise be to God. Oh, glory to God. We should walk as Christians with our heads held high. We're children of the Almighty God. Amen? Praise be to God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nobody above him. No president is above him. No king is above him. No dictator is above him. No Buddha is above him. No Muhammad is above him. Jesus Christ is number one, and he's above everybody. Every single knee will bow to, and say that Jesus is Lord. It's going to be on this side of life or the other side, and I'd highly encourage you to make it on this side of life. On the other side, you already went to hell, but you will one day in judgment bow and say, Jesus is Lord. Satan himself will bow and say, Jesus is Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 tells us in the word of God, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Church, the battlefield is in the mind. Satan does not attack our feet. He doesn't attack our legs. He doesn't attack, you know, our arms, our hands. He attacks our minds. But if we have a hedge of protection, that's why the Bible says when, when, when he throws the fiery dart of the wicked one, we take up the shield of what? Faith to quench it. We have faith in the Lord not to believe what the enemy is lying to us. The only thing the devil does good is he lies. <laughs> and everything he says is a lie. Somebody say, praise God. Amen. He's a deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. But how many of you know we got to know who we are in Christ Jesus? Amen. Praise be to God. When the devil comes to you and he starts trying to pull you down, you just point to him and say, do you know who you're talking to? Amen. You're talking to a child of God. I have the Holy Spirit living in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in you. In the name of Jesus, through this mouth, I bind and rebuke you, Satan. Get out of my life out of my family, out of my church, out of my finances, out of me completely in the name of Jesus. Amen? You take your authority in Christ because you know who you are. Amen? Do you realize when you walk in a room God just walked in? The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you only knew that. 
Amen. Somebody tell glory to God. That's exciting. Amen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2, it says that God is trying to change the way we think. He's trying to change the way we think. The way we think about things sometimes is not lined up with his word. The way he wants us to think is according to his word. You see, when we read it, when we study it, when we meditate upon it, when we confess it, we believe it, we live according to it, then we are confessing in the way that God wants us to think. Oh, I don't know about, you know, the devil comes and says to you, I don't know about tomorrow, I don't know about your future, I don't know what's going to happen, you'll probably be a loser in this, that, and the other. No, I am a winner in Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the Bible, devil tells me that he's given me a, uh, he wants me to prosper and gives me a great future and a great hope. And I'm standing on his word, I'm not listening to your lies. Praise God. Colossians 1.20 tells us in the Word of God, and through Him, God reconciled everything to Himself. Listen to this. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Colossians 2 and 14, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Satan says, you're guilty. Satan says, you've done this in the past. You've done that. You've done this. Guilty, guilty, guilty. But yet God is saying, I've taken all that record of the charges against you. And I have went and nailed them to the cross. You are forgiven. Somebody say, I'm forgiven. Oh, glory to God. 1 Peter 2.24, it says, He personally carried our sins in His body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. We're dead to sin and we can live for what is right. See, church, it's all about Jesus, isn't it? It's all about coming to church and worshiping Him. It's all about praising Him. It's all about adoring Him. It's all about bowing to Him. It's all about worshiping Him. It's all about living for Him. It's all about Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. And when we realize it's all about Him, life would be so much easier if we just simply say, I'm going to relax and I'm going to lean on Jesus. I'm going to lean on the everlasting arms. I'm not going to worry about things. Instead, I'm going to pray about everything. I'm not going to run whenever I have a trigger go off in my mind because I'm insecure or I feel fear or whatever the case is and run to something that's going to harm me. No, I'm going to run to Jesus in prayer. It's all about him. Amen. Somebody say, I am special in Christ. Somebody say, I am a child of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe your earthly dad didn't treat you very good, but how many know your heavenly dad is treating you very, very good? Amen? His love is just out of this world. He's a father to the fatherless. Oh, glory. Romans 6 and 6 tells us we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. The power of sin has been broken. Before we knew Jesus, we did nothing but sin because we could, the power of sin in our lives as a result of not accepting Christ was not broken. So therefore, we were slaves to sin. Now that the power of sin is broken, Satan still comes and tempts us, but we can say no to that because I'm going to go ahead in the other direction and I'm not going to partake in that sin because the power of sin has been broken and I don't have to do that because right now I'm a slave unto righteousness. How I many know we live to please the Lord, not to please ourselves? Amen? Hallelujah. Galatians 2.20, I, I talked about last week, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. <laughs> we stop there. None of us in this room, if we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and I trust that we do, we're not even our own. <laughs> it is no longer I who live. It's no longer Craig who lives. But Christ lives in me. So you know what that's saying? Craig is dead since he accepted Jesus. Christ Jesus lives inside of him. Now it's all about God being glorified in and through his life. Do you follow what I'm saying? 
If we would just die to self and say, I am considered ourselves dead, the Bible says, to sin. We're crucified with Christ on the cross, therefore I am dead to sin. I told you about the evangelist. He went ahead and he, um, he went and he was preaching different crusades and he walked in a place one time, a motel room, and somebody of the night, another woman, a prostitute, approached him and she said to him, come on, why don't you spend the night with me? He looked at her in the eye and you know what he said? I am dead. She looked at him and says, you what? I am dead. I'm dead to sin. I will not do that with you. So all of a sudden, you know, she just takes off, and now he starts chasing after her to share the gospel with her. <laughs> Praise God. Amen? So in other words, we, when sin tempts us and comes our way, no matter what that sin is, we can look at it and say, I'm already dead. I'm not partaking of that. Somebody say, Praise God for victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Grace is not the big cover-up of sin for the Christian. Grace is the empowerment from God so we don't have to sin. Amen. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue to sin that God's just going to keep on forgiving us? God forbid. We're doing something that we're dead to. A dead man can't get out of his grave and start sinning. Amen. Somebody say I'm dead to sin. Now, please turn to Colossians chapter 3. I want to read verses 1 through 7. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. This is talking about living, 1 through 17 rather, living the new life. Colossians 3. You ready? Now, this is all addressed to every single one of us. I want to take the scripture personally, amen? Somebody say, I'm going to take the scripture personally. Because how many, it's all, for, it's all for you and I, Amen? Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Oh, glory. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Somebody say, let heaven fill my thoughts. Do not only think about things down here on earth, for you died when Christ died, in your real life, I'm emphasizing that, real life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen? Amen. And when Christ, who is in you, in, who is your real life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. How many of us are looking forward to that? How many of us like to eat food? Are you ready for the Lamb's banquet? That food is out of this world. <laughs> Somebody say, praise God. You know, chef whoever on, on, on the Food Network, you know, he, he trump God at all concerning cooking. I'll tell you what, our taste buds are going to be new, glory to God. We're going to be able to, oh boy, I just, I'm looking forward to it. How about you? I don't know what's on the menu, but it's going to be really good. And it's going to be a pretty big table. And he invited every one of us, every one person in the world watching by television, he invited you too. But the only way to go to that banquet is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's by invitation only. It's a private party. Amen? So put to death, verse 5, put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual sin, impurity, lust, and shameful desires. Don't be greedy for the good things of this life, for this is idolatry. God's terrible anger will come upon those who do such things. You used to do them when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old evil nature and all its wicked deeds. In its place, you have clothed yourselves with a brand new nature that is continually being renewed as you learn more and more about Christ, who created this new nature within you. Let me stop there for a minute. How do you know the Bible many, many times talks about clothing yourself? It talks about taking off the old clothes, the old man. It talks about putting on the new clothes, the new man. You follow what I mean? Guys, isn't it really good when you get a brand new suit and you try it on, it looks really good? It's like it makes you feel like a million bucks, right? 
But how many of you know if you go outside and you're working all day, you get mud and ripped pants and everything else, it doesn't make you feel that good? You follow what I'm saying? So in other words, we put on the new man. We take off the old clothes and we put on Christ Jesus. Amen? And praise God. And he goes ahead and gives us victory in him. Praise be to God. Amen? Praise God. So the Bible goes on to say, it says, um, it says in verse 11, in this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters. And he lives in all of us. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Amen. How many know Christ is all that matters? Praise God. Verse 12. Since God chose you to be holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves, is that word clothe yourselves again, with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. How many know we're going to be offended? Every, all of us are going to be offended whether we're Christians or not. We must well already make up our mind. When somebody offends me, I'm not holding on to that. I'm going to forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. In light of them offending me, I'm going to see how much I offended God and he forgave me. And it's much easier to forgive somebody else. Amen? Praise God. You must let, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is what? Love. Love is what binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are all called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the words of Christ in all their richness live in your hearts and make you wise. Use his words to teach and counsel each other. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, let it be a representative of the Lord Jesus, all the while giving thanks through him to God the Father. You know, that's packed with so many truths. Amen. How many know we have the victory in Christ? Glory be to God. Turn over. Now, I want you to turn to another. Romans chapter 6 in the Word of God. These are so important scriptures, amen. Romans 6 in the Word. And when you're there, say amen. Romans chapter 6, I'm going to read the whole chapter. Because there's so many truths in this, and, we, and I'm going to comment on it as we read this, amen? amen. The book of Romans was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course, by the Apostle Paul. And with this book that he wrote, he's coming through with certain doctrinal things that, that we believe as Christians, and it's so, so important when we take this verse by verse. In chapter 6 of Romans, he's first talking about and addressing sin's broken, sin's power being broken. And it says in verse 1, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. The King James says, Shall we continue to, uh, to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen? You know, somebody was at, we were talking about this issue and I think it's so important. How many of our attitudes are concerning sin? In other words, we have the attitude that, hey, John, you know, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, I'm going to go and sin, and then at 3.05, I'm going I'm to ask God for forgiveness. I'm going to plan on it. Well, that's slapping Jesus' face and he's on the cross, and he's saying that, you know, I don't really appreciate what you did. Do you follow what I'm saying? If I took a baseball and I kept on smash throwing it through my, if, you know, my son kept on taking a, a baseball and, and threw it through my picture window in my house, and, and he said, Dad, please forgive me, I'm sorry. Then the next day he goes out and gets another baseball after that's been replaced and throws it through the window again. Gee, Dad, I'm sorry. Then the next day he does it again. Gee, I'm Dad, I'm sorry. He is disrespecting me because he's continually doing it, taking advantage of my grace. And there'll be a point where I'm going to say, that's it. Amen? Somebody say, I don't want to take advantage of Jesus' cross. Not take advantage of his grace. Amen? We, we've got to say, Lord, I hate this sin in my life. I don't like it. I don't want it. Praise be to God. You know, one indicator of being a true believer is when you sin, that you're convicted of that sin. The Holy Spirit convicts you of it, and you say, Lord, please forgive me. The Christian who is in very, very much trouble is doing it over and over and saying, I really don't care. You follow what I mean, amen? Praise God. So, so, so the Bible says, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? 
Or have you forgotten that when we became Christians and were baptized to become one with Christ Jesus, we died with him? We, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Don't you like your new life better than the old one? You ever get a brand new car and trade your old one in? Five years ago, I had the privilege of buying a brand new Camry. Five years ago. It's been five years. And I'll have to say this. This is not an advertisement for Toyota. I have not had one thing break down in that car in all five years. What car am I going to buy next? It will be a Toyota. Amen? Now, it's a reliable vehicle. And I'm saying all this to say this. I had a very, very old Jeep. When I drove the Jeep to the dealership in Portsmouth, what had happened was I hardly had any gasoline left. The Jeep was on its last leg. When I got the Jeep to them, they actually looked at it and I says, what can I trade this in for? They kind of laughed and said, nothing. <laughs> the, they took it for a test drive and they said, that the emergency brake doesn't work, this doesn't work, and on and on it goes. And I knew the Jeep was a piece of junk, believe me, and it was. I was so happy to drive off with that brand new car and leave the Jeep. Aren't you happy to drive off with brand new Jesus and leave the old you over there? Somebody say glory to God. Because, because I'll tell you what, you know, we got to say, Lord, thank you that all things are new in my life. I thank you so much that they're all new. Amen. Praise be to God. We also may live new lives. Glory to God. Would it be stupid if, if a week later I went back to Toyota and I said, I don't like this new car. I want my Jeep back. You know, the devil comes in, he says, oh, you remember before you were a Christian, you had so much fun? Remember that? You went out partying with your friends, and you did this, and you did that, and you were doing these drugs, and you did this marijuana. You did, you know, wow, what, what a great life that was. But he doesn't remind you of all the times that you get in trouble. He doesn't remind you of all the mess. He just tries to remind you of the so-called good things. I'm thinking of, you know, the, the people of God, the Hebrews, they're delivered. Praise God, they're crying out over and over and over again, Lord, please deliver us. Please deliver us from this Pharaoh, from this taskmaster. From, uh, this is terrible. And finally, God uses Moses and delivers them. Shortly thereafter, what are they doing? Complaining. God, I don't like this food. It's the same every day, this manna from heaven. I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back in the world. I don't want you no more, God. I want to go back in the flesh. And I want to have some leeks and garlic. Amazing how we forget and how they forgot with those Egyptians taking whips and slamming them as hard as they could. Pharaoh saying, you know something? Will you get your own straw to make this brick from now on. And making them work so, so much harder. Amen. You know, how many know it's a great life in Christ? Somebody one time said it's very hard to live the Christian life, but if we just let go of things and I, that we're trying to hold on to that are not of God, it's a lot easier to live it because we know where we're going. We know our destiny. Somebody say praise God for that. Amen. We're seated in heavenly places. Glory to God. Verse 5, since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised as he was. Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also share his new life. We are sure of this because Christ rose from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. He died once to defeat sin, and now he lives for the glory of God. So you should consider yourselves dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Christ Jesus. How many of church are supposed to consider ourselves dead to sin? Amen. Amen? If we walk around saying, I'm dead to sin, I'm considering myself dead to sin. Praise God. How many know a dead man can't sin? Amen? Verse 12, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in its into its lustful desires. Do not let any part of your body become a tool of wickedness to be used for sinning. Instead, give yourselves completely to God since you have been given new life. How many know completely to God? Lord, I'll give you 50%. Lord, I'll even give you up to 90. We've got to give ourselves completely to God. Amen? 
completely to God because he's given us new life. And use your whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. Somebody say that with me. Sin is no longer my master. Amen. See, sin is no longer our master. Glory to God. Amen. For you are no longer subject to the law, which enslaves you to sin. Instead, you are free by God's grace. Now, if I, you know what the law did? It simply reminded us, do not covet. So what do you start thinking about? The word covet. If there was no law, the Bible says, there would be no sin. But there was law. Then Jesus came and died on the cross. He's the, he's the Lamb of God who takes away all the sin of the world. He did away with the law because Jesus himself fulfilled it. And he died on the cross and took all of our sins with him. So, if I let me give you an analogy. If I told everybody today, and you watch my television, I don't want you to think about a pink elephant right now. Remember, I don't want you to think about a pink elephant right now. Don't think about a pink elephant right now. What are you thinking about right now? Because I told you not to. <laughs> you bring attention to something, and all of a sudden you focus on it. You follow what I'm saying? But now Jesus came and he said, I died on the cross for your sin. I fulfilled the law. You're not under law anymore. You're under grace. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we're forgiven. It's, in other words, it's not about our works in order to get to heaven. It's all about what Jesus already did. Amen. Romans 5.1, we're justified. Lord, how am I justified? By faith. You believe in Jesus. That's it. You're justified by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're saved by grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that. Not by works, lest any man should boast. So it's not about us. It's all about what Jesus already did. Christmas time is coming up. And if there's a gift under the, underneath the Christmas tree that says to Craig, and I take that gift and I receive it, I, I unwrap that paper and I say, wow, thank you so much for this new watch, Agnes. That's beautiful. Look at that new watch. I received it. It is now mine. But if I looked at that gift and it says to Craig from Agnes and it was all wrapped up and I said, okay, I know I have the gift over there, but you know, I'll wait until the day after Christmas, December 26. Maybe I'll wait, I'll wait till my birthday on December 31st to open it. Then I never opened it at all as time went on week after week, month after month. I knew it was there, but I never received it. You see, many people watching my television, they know about Jesus dying on the cross. They know the gift of salvation is there, but you haven't received him yet. Your gift is still under the tree. It's addressed to you, but you haven't received him. We've got to receive Jesus. That means we commit our lives to him. That means that we don't compromise with him. It means, yes, we're going to sometimes stumble and fall. We're not perfect. But how many know we just get up in the name of Jesus? We confess our sin to him because he's, he's just it, to forgive us for, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess. Amen. Amen? Because he is an awesome God. He has written a book for every one of us. Do you know that? You may be getting into a new chapter of your life right now, but I'll tell you what. At the end, you have victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We, God is such an awesome God. Amen? It says in verse 12 again, it says, it says this, Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to its lustful desires. Do not let any part of your body become a tool of wickedness to be used for sinning. Amen? Instead, give, yourself, give yourselves completely to God. Completely to God. Amen? Since you have been given new life. Somebody say new life. Now, go to verse 15 if you would. So since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? You can choose sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you have obeyed with all your hearts the new teaching God has given you. Now you are free from sin, your old master, and you have become slaves to your new master, righteousness. I speak this way using the illustration of slaves and masters because it is easy to understand. Before, you let yourselves be slaves of impurity and lawlessness. Now you must choose, somebody say choose, choose to be slaves of righteousness so that you will become holy. You see, the Christian has a choice. The non-Christian doesn't. 
We can choose to become slaves of righteousness because the power of sin has been broken. Because we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. The Holy Ghost lives within us. However, the sinner, they can choose to receive Jesus. That's where the, that's where the life begins. But they can't choose to stop sinning if they continue to go ahead and not live according to the way that God has. That is by receiving Christ in their heart as their Lord and Savior. You follow what I'm saying? So I was thinking about this area of uh, yesterday, last week actually, free will. Somebody say free will. Somebody asked me the question and said, why does God give us this free will? I said, well, let me give you an analogy. Let's hypothetically say, this is the, knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this plant right here, okay? Let's hypothetically say that God said, I'm not putting that tree in the garden of Eden. It's not going to be there. I'm not going to let it exist. We would all be automatons, robots, to have to serve God, because there'd be no choice. You know what pleases God? We have a free will, but we say yes to Jesus. Yes, Lord, you have created me. I am created in your image. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I choose to receive you. That glorifies God because you had the choice not to receive him if you didn't want to. Amen? Adam and Eve had the choice to partake of the fruit of that tree or not take of it. However, they did. But how many know obedience pleases God? When we obey him, we say, Lord, I want to do it your way, not my way. Amen? Praise be to God. So our free will said yes to Jesus, and he's very pleased about that. Verse 20 says, In those days when you were slaves of sin, you weren't concerned with doing what was right. And what was the result? It was not good, since now you are ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end up in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that awesome? What are the wages? The payment for sin is death. Eternity without God in a horrible place called hell. But the free gift of God. Who's the gift from? It's from God. Amen? Is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So think about eternity. How long is eternity? Is anybody, can anybody tell me how long eternity is? It's forever and ever and ever. You know, we may live on this earth. Who knows? We might live until we're 80, 70. Maybe we'll live until, way up until 100 years old. We don't know. But how many you know when we pass away as believers, we go home to be with the Lord, eternity is eternity. We'll live with God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You're never going to have a bad hair day. You're never going to have a headache. No bad news from the doctor. Not, not a day where we just feel tired and run down and fatigued. Amen. We're going to have brand new bodies. You're having a weight problem, you won't have to go on the Atkins diet because you'll already be on the Jesus diet. Somebody say praise God. Because his diet says this, I'm giving you a brand new body, a glorified one. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Apostle Paul talks about that. We're going to have a, whenever you get, listen, be encouraged, church. Whenever you have an ailment, you feel sick, whatever it might be, just remind yourself, Lord, one day I thank you, I'll be clothed with my new body. Amen. Isn't that awesome? A body that does not have cancer. A body that does not have any disease. A body that does not wrinkle. A body does not get gray hair eventually and then lose all your hair eventually. Amen? How many, <laughs> Brother Keats up there, he's a cameraman, he's going, Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. How many know God has a very awesome plan for you and I? Amen. See, this is God's plan. We were created in his image. This is the book. This is what it's all about. I told somebody yesterday, I said, keep on reading this every single day and you're going to see victory in Jesus. You get away from this book and stop reading it, I'll tell you what, you're going to have a lot of disaster. We all need to be reminded of the Word of God every day. The renewal of our mind is not a one-time situation, it's an everyday situation. Because, when we, you know, I'll tell you what, you just watch the news, and you're all filled up with all that, oh, another shooting, another this, another that, look what happened over here, oh my gosh, look what happened, oh, taxes are going up, what? Oh, and you get all this stuff inside of you. How many of you know we've got to read the Word and renew our thinking, our mind, Say, thank you, Lord, praise you, Jesus. I, I thank you, Lord God, that one day you will rule and reign in the new Jerusalem. 
which is 1,500 square miles, it will come down from heaven to the earth. Half the size of the United States of America. And God himself will rule in that city. Oh, praise God. We're talking about, uh, you know, um, this morning I was in a conversation with Sister Wendy. We get into the conversation about Veterans Day and how that many of her relatives were uh, in the different, um, you know, branches of, of the, um, like the Navy, the, the, the Army, the Marines, and so forth. They were talking about how war is so terrible, how people die, and how, how t terrible things happen. But how many know that we're, we're headed for one day? Amen. That Jesus will rule over the entire world. Amen? And he, there'll be no more governments, no more this, no more that. He'll be 100% ruling. You know something? That's what he wanted in the Garden of Eden, didn't he? You know, they, uh, you know, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. Every single day, and what happened? They ended up by sinning. But how many of you know, praise God, keep hope. Because one day, that glorious day, there'll be none of this mess that we're living in now. Amen. Somebody say praise God. One day, when we say the word ICU, it won't be talking about a hospital room. It'll be talking about I see you, Jesus. Face to face. <laughs> we, look, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. After Jesus comes back, when we go home to be with him, we'll see him face to face. Amen. Praise be to God. Aren't you looking forward to that day? You see Jesus face to face? You're the one who died on the cross for me. You're the one who redeemed me. You're the one who gave me victory. You're the one who cared for me, who loved me. You're the one who went to the cross, regardless of even at one point saying, if there's any other way, Father, let this cup pass from me. You're the one. It's face to face. Won't that be a glorious day, church? Praise be encouraged. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read verses, uh, chapter 7, a few more verses, then we'll close in a word of prayer. The Bible says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only to a person who is still living? Let me illustrate. When a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. But if he dies, the law of marriage no longer applies to her. So while your husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband husband dies, she is free from that law and does not commit adultery when she remarries. So this is the point. The law no longer holds you in its power because you died to its power when you died with Christ on the cross. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, you can produce good fruit, that is, good deeds for God. When we were controlled by our old sinful nature, sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died with Christ, and we are no longer captive to its power. Now we can really serve God, not in the old way by obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way by the Spirit. Somebody say that's good news, amen? Praise be to God. I just want to encourage you, church, keep on walking with the Lord. Keep on growing in Christ. Keep on focusing on the Word of God. J Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Centuries change. People change. Technology changes. People have different views of whatever it might be, but how many know God is the same? Amen? Aren't you, aren't you really excited that He's non-changing? Praise God. Let's stand up and have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you so much today. Thank you for each person that came out to church today. I pray, Lord, that we're being, we be encouraged in you with this message. We're so thankful that your word is absolute truth. We thank you, Lord God, that everything in the Bible is true. We thank you, Lord God, that we can rely on you, to trust in you, Lord God. We just magnify your name. Be glorified in our lives even this afternoon, Lord God. Have your own way and your perfect way and will in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for that. I pray for those who are not here today. I pray that we as a, as a church family would reach out to them, Father, to encourage them. I pray, Lord God, that you just have your perfect way and will in our lives. We thank you for that, and we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus. Can anybody tell me what today is besides Sunday and the Lord's Day? Today is Veterans Day. Besides honoring our vets, 
We need to honor the saints that have gone on before us. There are saints today that are giving their lives for our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture that comes to mind is John 15, 13. When you get there, please say amen. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. The supreme sacrifice was Jesus. But you know, our freedom here in the United States has not come easy. And it all started with the Lord. You know, if it hadn't been for the Lord, where would we be today? He is the true friend of each and every one of us. Our other friends come and go. We have what we call true friends, and we have friends that fall by the wayside and don't stand by our side no matter what. But you know, that's one thing you have to say with Jesus. Come what may, he's always there with us. He has made the supreme sacrifice. And the question that we need to ask ourselves, are we willing to take and return that sacrifice? If it came to that time where we had to stand before man and deny Christ or stand for him, no matter who is going to be sacrificed in front of us, would you stand or would you fall? There's many people that could not stand to, to take and see their loved ones sacrificed for the name of Jesus. And that's sad. But you know, my family knows that I will continue to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And when my, hu my husband and I was married for almost 14 years and we stood by that, I still stand by that. Because if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here now. I couldn't stand. There's no way I could stand. I would be lost in sin if not already dead. And being lost in sin, you are dead. You're not living. Thank the good Lord that he took and came down and died on the cross. He prayed the supreme sacrifice for his friends, his loved ones. And that's each and every one of us before we even knew him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that was made by Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, taking, giving us strength, Lord, to stand. When there's nothing else that we can do but stand and call upon your name. Help us, Lord, to grow each day in you. And help us to take and get stronger in you. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Craig Matheson, Pat. Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Thank you very much for watching us today on television. We air our services here on community television as well as through YouTube and also on our church website. I'd just like to offer you a couple of little booklets that I've written over the past few years. One of the booklets is called, Are You Going to Heaven When You Die? Now these booklets are absolutely free and they're postage paid. No obligation at all to you. We just want to get these booklets into your hands, being that you're viewing us here on television to be a blessing to you, just to say thank you for watching us. The Bible talks about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It talks about inviting Jesus into our lives, into our hearts as our personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So in other words, you invite Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. That's where the relationship starts. Now sometimes people might say, well, how do I do that? How, how do I go about that? that? This booklet answers those questions. Are you going to heaven when you die? And the second booklet ties right in with your personal relationship with God. And that is, it's entitled, Why Should I Go to Church? A lot of people don't go to church these days. A lot of people don't go to church, but church attendance is so vitally important to the Christian. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to come to church. 
You need to praise God in church. You need to give your testimonies in church, the good things that God is doing for you. You need to hear your pastor's message that he's preaching in your local church. It changes your life. You continue to grow and be a disciple um, or a learner in the Word of God. In other words, how do I live my life now that I'm a Christian? Well, when you go to church, you learn that. And also by reading your Bible every day, you learn that as well. So going to church is very, very important, having a home church. And this booklet points that out. Why should I go to church? And all the different Bible verses are in there biblically um, of why we should attend church on a regular basis as Christians. I just want to encourage you, the email address is there on the bottom of the screen. Or you can write to 17 Newcomb Street, which is our church address here in Havel, Massachusetts. Zip is 01830. Um, or give us a phone call and just leave a, a message on the voicemail with your name and your address. And we'll ship these right out to you. Postage paid, no obligation to you. We just simply want to get these into your hands to be a blessing to you. Thank you very much and may God bless you.